another freshie. It's the fourth one this year. <laughs> no big deal. Welcome to the very first video of our Forester Stage 3 build. So uh, you guys have seen some previous videos of our Stage 2, we're calling it, which is about 700 wheel horsepower. Um, we're going to attempt to make our Stage 3, which should bring us to 1,000 wheel. So behind me are some of the main components that we'll need for the build. And then we're going to film uh, us putting this together. We have a bunch of parts scattered over there. Uh, what you guys don't know is this is like months of work in advance. So... Um, this is December when this is going out now, the end of December. Some of these parts were ordered and planned back in May and June, just so that there wasn't any delays in videos. So rather than show you guys the progress along the way, we did post a few teasers on our Instagram stories, because they disappear uh, after 24 hours or whatever. But um, now we're going to, we have almost all the pieces in place, and now we're going to start the build and show you guys what goes into the Stage 3 build. And then hopefully, uh, once we're done tuning, we'll hit the four-digit number. Here. So, um, the main workhorse that we're starting off with, uh, of course, a new motor, because that's how we roll. Uh, just for anybody that might be questioning how reliable um, 700 horsepower was, there was nothing wrong with the motor when we sold it. I sold it to a friend of ours who was putting it in a 07 Limited STI. So that'll be really cool. The motor was perfectly fine. Um, it just isn't capable of going four digits like this one is. So this here is our IEG Stage 4 Extreme. This is the craziest block that they make, except for the will-all block, which is the same thing, just uh, a billet case, and IAG um, said that uh, it wasn't really um, preventing any of the other issues. So this is what they use in their drag cars, and this is basically the top of the line for what you get. So I'm going to read you off some of the specs of this while Remy puts in some beautiful um, cinematics of this block, and then we'll move on to the head. So... The IEG Stage 4 Extreme comes with brand new case halves, bored to 99.75. Uh, what's different about this one is this is the only block that gets pin mains, so they use 9.5mm pins in the mains and then it's line honed. This also uses the Firelock grooving technology, which the Magna motor in our Stage 2 used. Uh, it's closed deck, obviously. This has some special work done to it to make it withstand 1000 horsepower. It uses 14 millimeter head studs, um, 2618 steel forged pistons, electroless nickel plating, tops and ring areas. Um, everything's upgraded. So the wrist pins are bigger, it's a stronger tool steel material, and then the pistons are coated with the perfect skirt coating and offset wrist pins. And then this one uses tri beam connecting rods, ARP 625. Rod bolts and case bolts, um, which is why it has to be line honed. It uses uh, ACL race bearings. And then what's special for this one as well is this is a handmade billet crank by Callies, uh, who's like one of the best at doing it. So this is the only block that comes with a billet crank. And then it uses ARP case bolts everywhere, as you can see up here. So this is basically as strong as possible to make an aluminum motor hold all that power. So we'll show you a little bit later um, some shots underneath it where you can see a little bit of the tri-beam rods. Unfortunately, everything's kind of hidden, all the goodies in there, but um, that's why I kind of outline what this comes with for you. Now we move on to the heads. So um, these are new heads. Uh, I actually, I couldn't remember if I bought new heads or not. So these are V25 heads. This is a special head from Subaru that only came on the 2007 STI Limited, but it has the most material of the single AVCS heads for porting. So head games and IEG, they both like to use these heads if you can. So I bought a set of heads. Unfortunately, um, one of the heads had some material on the um, 
compression dome from the previous motor blowing up and when I sent it to Head Games they said that it would cost more to remove it than just buy a new one. So this is a brand new case half. This is actually the other used case half but you can't tell except for the carrier because it was vapor honed and it looks brand new. It's virtually new, all the internals are new, just the cam caps because they have to match the head are used which is why this doesn't look quite as shiny as this. So um, for Head Games we paid for the street port uh, EJ-2 which is their 700 to 1200 wheel horsepower package that includes the heavy duty porting on all the guides which we can compare to the a set of B25 heads we have here um, a valve job it's clearance for the high lift cams so they have to clearance in these grooves in here and on the carriers where they tend to hit for these humongous cams um, they're chambered, lashed, milled, and assembled they also installed bronze valve guides to match the new um, GSC ink canal valves, which I'll flip one of these heads over and show you. Um, so we did the GSC Super Alloy Exhaust Valves, the GSC 2012 Intake Valves, and the 5073 Conical Spring Kit, and which is all rated for 800 horsepower plus because it's part of the package and then these all receive brand new buckets so every component of these heads is new except for the cam caps because they're machined with it so uh, they also recommend going with the GSC 7025 S3 cams which are billet 280 degree duration cams so that's what we have here single ABCS because it's going in the Forester and the one new case half so uh, the hardware is all new on this because it's a new block but these should be ready to go. So I'll flip it over and show you the valves and then we'll kind of show you a couple of the trick things. So these cams, they say right there, um, they're all labeled because they're billet, they're etched in. These are S3280s. These are the biggest cams for Subarus that I know of, especially from Calford and GSC. These are the biggest. We flip this over. You can see in the combustion chamber, the all new valves that's complete valve job so basically we just get to bolt this on and check the valve clearance to see if there was any distortion and here you can see the heavy porting this was all done by hand the guys at head games are amazing they are starting to automate it but these were done by hand and then if we spin it around the intake receives a lot of knife edging and heavy grooves and the openings wider and you can compare that to a set of V25 heads on this motor, which this is a stock head, so you can see the casting marks and it's not smooth and how much material has been removed out of the centers. And then if you look up inside here, if you look inside of here, you can see the bronze valve guides that are matched perfectly with uh, these valves. Okay, so we just went through the block and the heads with you. These are the 14 millimeter head studs, which will show you a comparison to the 11 millimeter stock ones. We always run the 12 millimeter um, JDM oil pump. Oops, all over again. And then um, these are just the oil separator plate and the wrist pin holes that we have to seal up. So you guys will watch us do that in a minute here before we put it on the stand. Nothing special about that. So this is rated for over a thousand horsepower. These are rated for up to 1200 wheel. So obviously we have to have some other components to keep up with that. So we'll go over here and we'll kind of go through, I guess from left to right, we'll just quickly hit on these. Um, just if you're putting a build list together, if you don't want to watch the whole series, this is basically what it takes to make, well, we have some surprises. This will get you to about 800 and then we have something special to go the rest of the way. So very far left, always, always, always have a uh, solid pickup um, baffle and oil pan setup. That's the Killer B uh, high flow series. We put that on all of our builds. The IAG uh, baffle series is good too, but never run a stock pickup when you're doing this kind of power. Even that motor, which is only on 93, we still put the same pan pickup and baffle set up every one of our cars. Uh, we got new valve covers just because everything's new. Um, this is the HKS Kevlar timing belt. So generally once we get past 600 horsepower, we don't like to run the stock 
timing belts. So this is a this is 400% stronger than the stock one. It's uh, HKS purple. Uh, these are the new timing components. So the AVCS cam gears are also new and they are already metal. Um, but the plastic exhaust gears tend to break when you get to four digit power. So these are the new Roger Clark Motorsports billet aluminum cam gears. They actually kind of look plastic, but they're metal. Um, Remy checked them too. Uh, these are super nice. They almost look factory, but they're crazy strong. They fit exactly the same. We don't like to run the BC adjustable cam gears because they could slip, so this is the best option. These just came out. Um, the presentation is awesome with most everything. RCM. So those will be going on. Um, we're going rotated. Obviously, there is no turbo out there that can make this kind of power stock location. We already had the biggest one, so we have custom fitted tubing. So what you guys didn't see in this video, which you'll see in the future, is this car has already been mocked up months ago, went to Rise Fab Shop for a custom rotated kit, full four inch exhaust, which we'll have videos for and you can kind of see it peeping in the background if you're clo looking close. Um, so this is our new up pipe, um, which is 50% bigger than the stock one. And we had to go with the 44 mil wastegate. And then this has got the uh, turbo ceramic coating on it. So this flanges out from the two inch header opening to a two and a half inch pipe with a thicker wall so that it'll hold the weight of the turbo. And because we want this to be a sleeper, uh, we have to run a wastegate, but our screamer pipe now will snake along the car and go all the way out to the bottom of the car so no melting exhaust boots. Um, for those of you guys that are looking forward to fender or hood exit, sorry, but we're running a full exhaust with a muffler and resonator, but it is a four inch exhaust monster. So this will uh, keep everything safe. Then we run with a uh, Tile Q50 blow-off valve. This is like the biggest one that can hold a bunch of power. Uh, this one, you basically just change the spring out depending on your cam size. It comes with a 8 PSI spring, I believe. Since we're running 280 cams, we need to put a 10 PSI spring in it. It's V-band. Uh, one thing about this motor is we're getting rid of almost all gaskets. So there'll be almost no gaskets on the car. Everything is O-rings or V-bands now, um, which we like better. This is the Tile 44 millimeter external wastegate. This is the biggest one they make as well. It can be liquid cooled for extra heat capacity. It looks beautiful. I had to get it in red, which made us change our color scheme on the car, which you'll see later, but it's going to look good. <coughs> uh, after that, we have to move to solid motor mounts. So these are IAG's solid motor mount series. You can switch these out for different strengths of rubber if you don't want a solid mount, but we need to go that way. So we have those. Uh, IAG 2600 injectors. These are the biggest injectors that they make. Um, they actually look exactly the same as the 1050s. It's just the internal components that are bigger, but these are 2600s, as you can see on the box. And then... This is <clears throat> IAG's Big Bore Throttle Body. It's already on the intake, but here's the sticker for it. So this is a 76 millimeter throttle body. It's significantly bigger than the factory one. I didn't realize how much bigger it was until we put it on, but it's like 50% bigger. The crown jewel probably of the whole build is the OG Corsa Veloz billet intake manifold from uh, Australia. This is the one that Process West did the knockoff of, and we've already got the IEG Big Bore throttle body on it, which is also O-ringed, so no gasket. And then you just uh, um, put your cover from your throttle body connector on here. And actually, if you look, if you look inside here, we might need to do this on the bench. They, these tubes actually have uh, velocity stacks on the inside to smooth out the airflow. It's really cool. We'll shine a flashlight in there in a minute, but you can see them inside. And all of the vacuum lines are now moved to the bottom. This thing is beautiful, and I'm nervous to scratch it when we put it on. Uh, the rest of the stuff is stock, and then the one that really does all the work is our new turbo. So this is a Big Boy Precision. Um, this is a <clears throat> 6466 Gen 2, the newest one, the anti-surge housing. 
and this is a 105 AR hot side. It says it right there. This is the one that just came out. So this is the biggest hot side they make. Um, can I see it back there? So this turbo <clears throat> with that hot side will do a little bit over 800 wheel. Uh, and you're probably wondering how we're going to get to 1,000 if that one only does a little over 800, but we'll get to that later. Um, but that will that is like the king of street turbos, so that will allow you to make the most power possible without waiting until like 6,000 RPMs to make boost, so that should be pretty drivable. We are going to run a filter on it, no more open turbo, so this is just a big K&N rechargeable 4-inch uh, opening filter to sit on the turbo there uh, with some custom piping. And... There's one more component that we'll get to later in the build, but basically this is what it takes to make 800 plus horsepower, and then we're going to get another 200 with something else. There's the Forester in there. Uh, the only thing missing from here is like the IEG AOS and all your sensors and gauges that you need, but this is essentially the hard components that you need. Go ahead and twist it while I get your next thing. Like performance surgery. ASMR screws and clicks. <laughs> Alright, you want to grab that torque wrench? Separator plate.
so they don't have instructions with this um, like where these bolts go so if you get a new block you kind of have to look this up online because the first time we did this there wasn't any instructions so the um, this oil separator plate goes on here and there's this arrow here that points to this bolt this one is the black bolt with the loctite on it the rest of these are the uh, pan head allens if you use these flatheads it won't fit right because these are for the dish on the plate that goes right there okay so um and this has an o-ring on it that you can't forget either so it's kind of confusing because there'll be two pan heads and like five or uh, two flat heads and two pa and five pan heads and then the one black one it doesn't come with the bolt, so you should have like the tail and i don't know why that bolt is always the one with the loctite but it is and this gets fuji on it as well um will you yeah um that'll fit that real quick uh so on my main toolbox oh actually there's ones right there i forgot i got two sets now So I'll set this on there and then use that on there to use this one to center it so we don't smear all those. So it's going to go in that hole there. Um, that's the only thing that goes inside of there and that's when we torqued already. I'm going to throw this one on real quick and then we'll um, torque everything. The Fuji Bond takes a little bit to seal, so we got some time. It sucks that like, this will never look this nice again and we'll never order another one again, but it's like, yeah, get all the glamour shots we can. Sixty in the ARP case bolts too, because that they don't do that to the big ones with the torque and everything. Hey, where'd you get a Higgins shirt? I've had it. What? Good shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! That's all. That crank really sucks to get the. Uh... 
pulley, the front crank pulley on with because it's such a tight yeah. tolerance. Just like put it on, draw it in with a bolt. It's kind of scary. Can you hold that top? Mm -hmm. Just kind of put your finger on some stuff. Yeah, this is the first time not using a stock crank, so it's definitely going to be You won't notice the difference. I mean, like with that bolt here, and this one seems to be a little bit tighter too. You know, my neighbor with the race car that never drives it that I thought, he blew it up. <laughs> that day that you were here. Yeah. When he was driving it to the gas station. Yeah. I was helping uh, the neighbor next door put some headlights in his truck, and I was like, hey, I actually seen him driving it the other day for the first time. And he was like, yeah, he made it to the gas station and went down the Maynardville Pike here and looked at the head. <laughs> well, that sucks. The wood makes it nice and smooth. Just a rickety ass two by four. And a ten thousand dollar block. <laughs> Alright. She's ready. Tip it so you can get your hand in there and then yeah. Ta -da! There's a serial number, Remy. Oh, it did say on the box. 9025, they had it written in Sharpie on the lid. Oh, on the lid. I didn't see it on the side. 9025. Yeah. All right, so we'll we'll just face it this way. We'll put the tools over there when we get back, and that's like tools here, parts. But uh, That's crazy. What are we looking at? This is a 14 mil head stud that we use on the bigger locks, and this is an 11 millimeter stock replacement one. Barely fit in the head. Side of it? 11 sixteenths. Did you get one? Of it? Yeah, I have from when we did the Magnum. Did you bring it over here? No. Probably the 11 sixteenths socket. Needs, right. needs to be 12 point. Top, top drawer of the toolbox, that's a chromey. Yep. Um, 11 sixteenths? Yeah. Cool. Make sure it's 12. Those freaking head studs don't fit in there. They're a bitch straight now. Yeah, they're just barely fit in there. Okay. Uh, this one might need to go a little bit farther, but... Well, the head will pull it down. I'm not too worried about it. As long as it's just going to get seated yeah. in there. Alright. Squeeze the rings. No, they're on there right now. Um, just a nice groove. Alright, what side are we doing? Right hand side. Or this one? Bye bye, I'm going to see you again. Bye, have a great time. Yeah. You're gonna have a shit ass life, sorry about that. Oh wait. It's gonna stick his dead line too. Look at that. Clean the threads off then. Yeah, look at it. You literally have to thread it into that, it doesn't even. <laughs> I need to clean these threads off. No. Yeah. This is why I don't mind torquing down all those mm -hmm. threads. This makes a lot of sense. Doesn't have a lot in it, it's a little sketch. Okay, you wanna wipe those? Yeah. 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 Oh, 
plug your head in your pocket on it still. That's what, what happens when you order head gaskets on Wish.com. Oh. I don't know. Oh, these thread forever. Remedy's gonna like, go close up better. So I hold on, hold on a second. I'm gonna do one for, for my, my phone here. Okay, it's actually in now. Alright, time to put on the fire lock head gaskets. Oh. Oh, oh. This must be the wish.com version. Okay. <laughs> Fifth sure. yeah. God, these things are so beefy. By the time you get all six of these in there, like 20% of the head is stud. <laughs> Bit to sit. Yeah. I love when they go all the way to the bottom without any resistance though. <laughs> Even the stud barely fits there. They're like, just leave it on top of the piston and leave it. We'll see if it melts during its life, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna get a picture of this movie again. Detonation problem. Alright. Now I need to be like, post on the Subaru group. Guys, I ordered my head gaskets from wish.com. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I got. You should. People get freaked out. Remember when we posted the boost gauge photo and the guy got, I was like, yeah, you guys fucked with that gauge. <laughs> I said, uh, what did I say? I don't know, Stock Foresters made this much boost or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, everybody was freaking out. They weren't even like laughing at it. They were like, um, all concerned. Uh, you can't do those because the center, right? Those should be already cut for it. So. The fire lock head gaskets are basically just a felt cheap gasket because all this compression sealing is these rings. Um, but one thing is, you just saw in the video, we take this back out, you have to thread the center bolt into here um, so you don't damage it. If you don't use these head gaskets, you have to cut that hole bigger, but these are big enough, they just have to be threaded. So set it in, these rings sit halfway in the block, and then the other half is on the head. They fit nice and turn. Head gasket goes on. Thread those through. And then put these on. Mm -hmm. it seems weird using felt gaskets on a turbo motor, but everything's done with that ring. Does go flat, it just yeah, it needs to go flat. A little tension look like that's how I don't want to go. I'm gonna do it now. So you don't you you only do these if I finger tight and then basically just make sure that they're bottomed out. You don't really need to apply any pressure. They go all the way to the bottom. But on a non-brand new case app, you might have some buildup. So you gotta make sure they're even. Okay, so she's all threaded up. Now we're gonna use the ARP lube and do these threads. 
and then we'll put the head on. I guess we'll save that jar of leaves. This is easier. It's easier to probably have to clean too in the back side. Yeah, it can fucking fall out. heads are this V25? Yeah, well, that's why I said one side has half moons and one that's doesn't. I guess one's a new casting. Yeah, I think that they stopped too. I think they stopped using those. You the other side or you new? Just lined up. Look, look through the hole. You get over here. Alright, you've checked those rings. Those rings are good. Make sure one more time. Yeah, they're flat. Just look through the, uh, the hole there and Tight fit. Yeah. Head bolts barely cut through. You gotta have the heads drilled for them, anyways. Got the rubber. Caesar, but the uh, washer and the nut hits almost everything. <clears throat> Do you have the instructions out for these? Just about to look them up just to make sure. <laughs> See, it's got the blue link on it. <laughs> Jeez. <clears throat> you you get some message. Speak. Yeah, what's up? Oh, um, I'm about to throw metal around the garage, and I was thinking about David's motor. I don't want to get anything. Put a blanket or something over it. Is the blanket in the tote the one that goes over your motor? Yeah, the uh, white uh, sheet. Really, yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty safe now since the manifold and everything's on it. So. I would just block off the one going into the turbo. Okay. For sure, that one. Yeah. And then okay. otherwise, okay. Just, yeah, I'm going to be in the throttle right body. Metal is going to be fine. Just throw a blanket yeah. over it, it'd be fine. Okay. Thank you, though. Yeah. Yeah, I was more nervous about it when it was opened up like this. That's when I was really nervous <laughs> yeah, about it. But yeah, and I wouldn't be. Now that it's assembled, valve covers are on it, it's pretty safe now, but just throw a blanket over it. Yeah. Imagine David has a gets a notification on Facebook from Wish.com. So Hi, David. It's an issue with your order. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> All right. Oh, <clears throat> experience. Here's the uh, torque wrench. 
Uh, do we have to use the big metal one? Because it'd be behind you. Yeah, we gotta use the big boy. Okay. Figured so. Yeah. So we put this in our last video, and some people questioned it. When you're using the 14 millimeter head studs on IAG, depending on when you bought them, there's different torque sequence. So make sure you pay attention to that. So these ones are brand new, so it's after April 19th, 2018. We're going to do 35, 70, 105, 130, 155, and the center and the outside end up at the same, but the outer four have a different sequence. So this is what we're following because they're new studs. Somebody mentioned that on our Magnum video that they thought we had the wrong spec, but it was different as it does. So uh, the grease is on the bottom of the nut, so we'll just snug them down and then we're going to start on this. forgot the center two get... Like five more pounds each time until the end. Something like that. Yeah. What's the first one? Uh, center two at 35, outer four at 25. Buckets are new. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of new ones in mine because yeah, they measure them and do the one. Okay, so 35 center, 25 outer. Oh, you don't need to. Yeah, the, the, the pin is not in it. So. Same pattern as stock. Where's the bolt for the center? I don't know. I was going to try to grab this one, but I don't know if it'll fit. It. It well, it's not that. It's not lined up with the hole. Oh, okay. Uh, Alright, what's the next step? We do 70 center, 60 outer. Well, we might Which, have to it's, it's fine now. We can do it now. I was afraid to when the, uh, you grab that the rings out. were yeah. kind of loose. I didn't want to fall. Yeah. I had the actual bolt for it somewhere. I don't know where I put it. I just wanted it standing straight up and down while we were doing the rings. Thanks. If it fits. Stock head bolt. <laughs> okay. So, 70 inner, 60 outer. Definitely. It doesn't even feel that tight. I love these. Sixty outer? Yeah. Can you smell the power? <laughs> Smells like freedom. <laughs> Smells like Japanese bald eagle. <laughs> Center, 120 outer. <laughs> so just. I'm passing the lug nut range. 
Yeah, so my diesel truck lug nuts go to 125, so we're already at that. Heads never left. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and then, then 155 on both. And she's done. Beautiful. Congrats, doctors. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> um, now we can lay cams in here and check that valve wash. Yeah, we gotta throw some oil on those. Anyways. Built cam sticks. This means number four. That's over. Wait. No, I don't know what that'd be. Mm -hmm. I just noticed it now. I was like, oh, that must be the piston that's drop in and the arrow facing forward. Same thing, 25 and 20. Um, the sheet is in there. I think it is 25 and 20, but I'll double check. Uh, torque these down. Fourteen. Yeah, it's like fourteen five and eleven eight or something. And a half and seven. So now we're just checking head game is clearance because the head's torque. They should be, they were all set to the right spec when they sent them, but they didn't have a torque in a block, so you gotta double check. Um, hopefully they're all within specs, so they don't have to mess with any buckets, because these buckets are all brand new. Huh? I didn't know if you needed to do that. Oh. 
Uh, not for certain. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I don't have any lube on them, so they spin a little bit hard, but... Hopefully they're all good. I don't want to mess with them. See, that's a trick because you got to leave as much metal as possible so it doesn't break. Yeah. But you don't want it to hit, so it's like so dangerously close. Freaking cantaloupes go higher than the caps. <laughs> That's a nasty cam. You versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> <clears throat> the difference is pretty crazy. It's wild. The uh, metals. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Send her home. Put them in across the board. Full thing? Yeah. Full thing? We're going to this, need to get an air pump. We're going to need an air pump to leak for it over here. Yeah, so I got the kit. Remember I bought extras that last time from Chaos Tech? Since uh, you can't this much put. Sorry, I'm just trying to. It shouldn't roll. Cool that it was a 2-3, but really that could be a 6 swap if it was like a newer EcoBoost out, because that thing would still rip. Mm -hmm. They hold about 5 until... And lighter, you know, because they had an old 5 liter. Alright guys, that's going to conclude uh, part 1 of the Bankrupt Stage 3 build. So, we got the heads on, cam clearances checked. Uh, we started to put the valve covers on, but because we bought new parts, we're missing a few things as expected. So in the next video, you're gonna see us do the oil pan, pickup, headers, uh, engine mounts. We'll seal the valve covers up and then we'll do the timing and everything. So this one was kind of an intro to the build, all the parts you need to make the power. And then uh, from here on out, we're just gonna see us putting things on and explaining a little bit of why we chose the setup the way we did. And then at the end, when we're all done, we'll post some dyno videos and show you why we made the decisions that we made. So I'll see you guys next time.